you've been hanging out in my channel for any length of time, you've probably noticed that I'm obsessed with all things Japanese. The history, the culture, the people, the ideology, Shintoism, Bushido, the Shogunate era, my name, <laughs> the samurai. My bucket list definitely includes a two or three month tour of Japan at some point. But another fascinating past of Japan is the architecture. It's completely unique, especially the feudal Japan style, and I love building Japan-centric stuff in Minecraft. Heck, I even built a near one-to-one -one scale replica of Maragami Castle on Dangercraft that I was really proud of, and still am, although it does look kind of dated now. But there's one architectural feature that so completely screams Japan that it's just begging to be built everywhere, and that's the Tori Arch. Tori arches can be found all over Japan in hundreds of different designs and styles and are used as entrances to Shintao shrines. They're sweeping, brightly colored, beautifully crafted, and signify a transition from the mundane world that we all live in to that of the sacred. And it just so happens they are surprisingly easy to build in Minecraft, so if you are a lover of all things Japanese like I am, buckle up because I'm going to show you four different designs to create them from scratch in your world. Our first design is probably the simplest and most traditional of the arches, making use of just plain old wood. Tori arches were traditionally wooden structures, and it's only been in the last century or so that you see other materials like concrete, brass, copper, or steel being used to manufacture new ones. This arch is just a few bits of wooden fence covered with blank signs at the top, and then capped with slabs and upside-down fence for the arch part of the arch. You can choose whatever wood you like the most, but I'd suggest two different styles just to give it some variation. And this one, for instance, I used spruce and oak signs just to give it a little bit of uh, texture and a little bit of something else for the eye to look at. Next is a slightly larger design that's made out of some different materials, sandstone and polished granite. This one uses sandstone walls for the legs of the arch, has some slabs in the middle for more structure, and then uses polished granite slabs and stairs at the top for the cap on the arch. Since this is a beefier construction, we're using two full blocks at the bottom to signify the base, in this case mushroom stems which I think have a great organic texture, but they're still a solid looking. You could use quartz or anything else that you feel would look good in this particular circumstance. Now, for those of you in the latest 1.16 snapshot like I am, this one is for you, as it uses some of the new blocks, specifically dark stone and warped wood in its construction. I can't wait for 1.16 simply because of all the things I have planned with the new options, including some much more brightly colored build like this. The general look is pretty much the same as the last one, but we're using some crimson gates to make smaller sub-pillars out from the main arch, which is a feature of many Tori arches you come across in Japan. We've also put a bell in the center because a lot of the Tori arches do have bells on them as well, and we've used the warp wood on the top to cap everything off. By the way, feel free to use whatever ground base you like. I just filled mine in with some blocks I thought looked good with this particular build. Uh, in this case, we used some planks, some stripped warped wood, some lapis, uh, some of the mycelium, and we've done something similar with the other ones over here as well, as we've got some random bricks and blocks here, and then we've got wood around the wooden base. For our fourth arch, I went a little crazy. <laughs> Building arches like this on a small scale is fine and all, but what if you want an enormous one? Well, you can do that, but be prepared for a long build and quite a bit of pain. And this is why. <laughs> this took me about two hours in creative mode to make, so I can't even imagine how long it would take in survival, especially considering I used prismarine for the top of the arch, dried kelp blocks for the cap, and about, oh, 3,000 sheep's worth of red bull for the main construction, not to mention the concrete down there at the bottom. The biggest problem with building something like this, honestly, at this scale, is shape. Getting the shape right twice, because you have to do it on both sides. It's a nightmare, even in creative. But I do think this is a gorgeous build, and I'm really proud of the way it came out. Now, note this is not a completely original build. It's not originally my idea, as I believe the original design for this can be traced back to Pearlescent Moon, who, by the way, is about 500 times the builder I am. So go check out her stuff as well. I've got a link in the description to her channel for you to get some more inspiration. But I really enjoyed this build. I really liked the way it came out, even though if you look at the scale, look at the size of this. Because here's the scale of the arches we just built, and here's this one. The nice thing about building at this scale is you can get that sweeping arch look a lot more easily than you can with smaller builds. You just have to do a whole lot of math to figure out exactly what you're doing here. Whether you're going to go seven blocks or five or a combination. I did seven, five, seven, and seven to give you that arched look, but you're going to have to just sort of play around with it to get the, the final version of it how you want. But if you're going to build something this big, why not make it functional too? So, as you can see, on the back here, we have a couple of doors that lead to 
a water elevator, which then in turn leads to a little hidden base. So here we have a semi-hidden base with all the comforts of home, a tatami mat bed, crafting stations, furnaces, storage off in the corner, plus you have a great view of these red stained glass windows and a continuation of that Japanese feel using the kelp blocks for the walls. Probably not a starter base per se, simply because this is more than likely something you're going to build in a more advanced world, but it could be a really fun alternative to a traditional base. Plus, I've only used half the interior of the arch, too, so you could possibly expand it even more with redstone storage contraptions, an auto furnace, and whatever you feel like. So that's been four different, and one completely insane, Tori Arch builds. I hope you enjoyed this short build tutorial, and if you did, please feel free to leave a like on this video on your way out the door. If you're new here and you enjoy a combination of tutorials, let's plays, and just random fun, consider subscribing and joining my Discord linked below. But whatever you do tonight, make sure you go out, play some games, have some fun, and I'll see you all again real soon. Have a good night.